Hello everyone, hope you are doing great. Today we continue our second session uh, on energy balance on non-reactive process. Uh, hopefully by today's course, you'll be able to calculate the changes of enthalpy uh, for the component that you don't have the tabulated data as we had before for a steam and actually water compound. Uh, so uh, still, I think you already have these uh, deadlines. So this, this is the example we want to focus today, hopefully understand it and uh, are able to calculate uh, enthalpy for similar examples after on. So we have acetone uh, that in this figure it shows as AC. We have acetone that is uh, partially condensed out of a gas stream containing 66.9 mole of uh, percentage of mole of acetone vapor and the balance is nitrogen. Process specification and material balance calculation lead to the flow chart shown below. The process is a steady state. We have to calculate the required cooling rate in this condensate. So first of all, by looking overall on this uh, flow chart, we have to be able to conduct some uh, simple calculation, especially about mass balance. Before we go ahead, I want you be able to be. I want you be able to calculate, for example, the mole rate of acetone, mole rate of nitrogen, uh, mole rate of acetone here, mole rate of nitrogen here, and actually here you already given the mole rate of the acetone. You you should be able to calculate the mass first, right? So I will show you here how, for example, if for example this is the composition of the acetone in this stream, I'm sure you know how much is the mole rate of the acetone. The composition of acetone multiplied by 100, that is mole the second, it will give you the 66.9 mole per second of acetone, right? Of acetone in vapor here, right? Agree, right? So this one you already know how to calculate. If you have the total uh, mole rate of one stream that has a mixture of different components, so you, you are able to calculate each of them. So for acetone, we have 66.9 mole per second. And I'm sure you know how much is for nitrogen. The composition multiply by the total mole rate, which is 33.1 mole uh, mole rate of nitrogen in the inlet. So by this simple calculation, you are able to calculate mole rate, how much acetone in vapor you have, how much nitrogen in vapor we have, because you have to know each of them, each of the component you have. So that is the way we can calculate each of these components. So we have 66.9 mole per second of acetone, and we have 33.1 uh, mole rate of the nitrogen in the inlet. So this is a component you have in the inlet. The same way, if you want to calculate for the outlet, how much is the mole, uh, per mole rate of the acetone if the composition is 0, 0, 9, 2. So if you multiply it by total rate, 36.45, so you are able to, if I did the calculation, we will have three by doing the calculation, 3.35 mole per second of acetone, right? Acetone at the exit, vapor at the exit. So this is the composition. In the outlet, the other composite, the other outlet the stream that you have is nitrogen. That is the composition, and uh, how much is the total stream? Thirty six point forty five. That is equal to uh, three three point one. If I am right, yeah, it should be three thirty three point one because it should be equal to this value, right? 33.1, 33.1. 
So even now, the rest should be acetone. Okay, so by this simple calculation, we understand how much acetone uh, here we have, how much nitrogen we have here, you, because you should have the mole rate or mass rate of each component. Here we can calculate the mole rate. So you have these two components, acetone and actually nitrogen in the inlet. So now if you want to calculate the mole rate, the um, Q here, uh, based on the simple, if we go here, So based on this simple energy balance equation, we know delta H plus delta EK, delta EP is Q minus W. We don't have work of the shaft in the condenser, so this one is zero. We don't have changes of uh, potential energy. We don't have changes of kinetic energy. So heat transfer is equal to uh, enthalpy changes. And for enthalpy changes, you know, H out minus H in means all the uh, uh, sum of the all the enthalpy of the outlet stream minus all the the sum of the uh, all the inlet stream that you have. What inlet stream you have? Acetone nitrogen. So you should have uh, enthalpy of acetone, enthalpy of nitrogen here. And what are the outlet stream here? Acetone, here nitrogen, and here acetone. So overall, how many H we need to know to be able to calculate the energy balance here? We need to know. H enthalpy actually. We need enthalpy of acetone because the phase is important, so it is in vapor. So the other one is enthalpy of nitrogen. Uh, nitrogen here because 65 and one atmosphere for sure it is vapor. Gas for vapor and actually. Mm, you know already for acetone you already have mole rate for nitrogen you have mole rate for this thing because uh, enthalpy for sure depends on the temperature and pressure we know for these two stream the temperature is 65 and one atmosphere here you need again even here you have you need enthalpy of uh, again acetone in vapor in this temperature and pressure here and here you need enthalpy of nitrogen. Uh, for sure it is vapor because of the temperature and pressure. And finally you need enthalpy of acetone in liquid phase. So by knowing these five uh, enthalpy, you are able to calculate delta H, means sum of all this H minus sum of these two H, sum of this all enthalpy, enthalpy of outlet minus enthalpy of inlet, right? So we need this information. How we have to calculate? First of all, you are not able to calculate the enthalpy at a specific point. However, you don't need, you just, uh, you need delta H. I mean, enthalpy of this point, minus enthalpy of a reference point. So that you can consider this delta H as the enthalpy of this point, right? How we have to calculate this one? So you need a reference point. By considering a reference point for all these conditions, I mean, for all the acetone you have here, you need one reference point. So you can calculate the enthalpy of here versus that reference point. Enthalpy of acetone here versus that reference point. Uh, enthalpy of acetone here versus that specific reference point. So if you have one reference point for acetone and one reference point for, for nitrogen, you can calculate the enthalpy of each of these points. So for reference point, you can consider any point for yourself and you consider the changes of the energy from that reference point to this point, for example, for acetone, for nitrogen. So for your easy actually calculation, you can choose reference point for acetone from either of these three points you have. For example, you can consider this one or this one or this one as your reference point. By considering that one as reference point, you can consider, because it is reference point, enthalpy in this point is zero. Then you calculate the enthalpy of the other point versus zero. So it is delta H, but it is just H of that point. 
So you need to choose one reference point for acid one, one reference point for nitrogen. Nitrogen. So it's up to you. If you choose one of these points as your reference point, so one of them will be zero automatically. If you put, uh, if you choose ni this nitrogen in this condition or nitrogen in this condition as your reference point, so one of them will be zero. So for me, I choose uh, acetone in liquid in this temperature and pressure as your reference point for acetone. So for this point, by selecting as reference point, enthalpy will be zero. So I have to calculate acetone of this here by co comparing to this reference point. We will see how we have to write the changes of enthalpy versus the reference point to the final point. The same thing, if we want to calculate as enthalpy of acetone here, we have to consider from this reference point to this one. And the last one for nitrogen, you can choose this one or this one as your reference point, doesn't matter. So if you consider, for example, this one as your reference point, so you have to calculate this one because this one is considered zero. So by this explanation, I want to tell you, I assume, this one as a reference point, so it will be zero. We are, we are assuming this one as our reference point, and this one as our reference point for the acetone. So if you want to calculate the enthalpy of acetone in vapor point at 20 degree and five atmosphere, you have to consider the changes of enthalpy in this point compared to this point. If you want to calculate the enthalpy of acetone in this condition, vapor 65, one atmosphere, you have to consider the changes of enthalpy from this point to this point, from reference to the final. The same thing for nitrogen. If this point is zero, to calculate enthalpy at N2 versus this point. So based on this, we write this table, right? Well, let me... Remove this point. Hopefully you understand. So by this assumption I put for you, I considered, uh, so this is the calculation for the mole rate of each point. Uh, this is for just inlet stream. In inlet, we have acetone in vapor, nitrogen in vapor. This is the calculation of the mole rate I did for you. This is a reference point I choose. This one we have to calculate. For the outlet, we have all, we have acetone in vapor, acetone in liquid, and nitrogen, if you refer to the flow chart. So for this three, we already calculated how. For this one, we consider as, your, as our reference point, so it is zero. For the other two points, we have to calculate. So we have three points we want to calculate. We know, into, we know uh, temperature, phase, and pressure in this point. And we know temperature, pressure, and phase of the reference point that we select. For acetone means H1 and H2, you have to consider versus this reference point. And for nitrogen, you have to consider H3 versus this reference point. So if you continue, this is the for H1, as I mentioned, this is our reference point that we selected. This is the final point uh, that we have. Acetone as vapor, 65 and 1 atmosphere. Now you have to break it down to the uh, pathway that you reach, you bring acetone in liquid and 20 degree and 5 atmosphere to this condition by changing phase, temperature, pressure, but each of them, one, uh, just you can keep one of them changed, the other two should be, uh, should maintain same. What I mean, for example, if I want to have acetone at one atmosphere, first I should decrease the pressure. In the first step, I uh, decrease the pressure from five atmosphere in one atmosphere, but you, you cannot change the temperature and phase. So this one you can calculate. You can calculate if you have a changes of the pressure, when the temperature and the phase are constant, the changes of enthalpy is V delta P. Later, when you have the pressure is what you have, now it's, better, it's, it's the time to change the temperature. For temperature, you always have to consider the phase change. For example, here, 
we know uh, the boiling point of acetone is 56 at one atmosphere, right? So if we increase the temperature first to 56, and you have to keep the phase constant, so these uh, changes of the enthalpy that can be considered, can be calculated by, based on CPDT, changes of the enthalpy at constant temperature without change of the phase. After it reached to the boiling point, by keeping the temperature and pressure constant, you can evaporate the compound by considering the evaporation latent heat. This latent heat you have, it is from the table, but you have to consider this data is just for one atmosphere. So it is, you can use this value because your uh, pressure here is one atmosphere. And finally, you can increase it to the final temperature that you want. The changes of enthalpy here is CPDT because pressure is constant, phase is same, just temperature has been changed. So it is easy now. You know how to calculate enthalpy in each stage. So by adding all of them together, that is the delta H or H1, to change the actually acetone from this uh, reference condition to the final, that is H1 point. So you have to calculate each of this one and add them together. This is the, uh, the enthalpy or a specific enthalpy and H1. That is the main point of this part. For this CPDT, CPDT, I told you how to read the data from the table because this one is in liquid phase, this one is in gas phase, so you have to consider these differences. For changes of the, or latent heat of evaporation at one atmosphere, again, you can read it for different components at the table in table B1. VDP, actually, you know, we have a specific uh, gravity of different compound. So we can uh, change, actually I converted a specific volume to the density as we know before. And I just uh, simplify this equation to be able to use the data that you have from the table to calculate VDP. VDP, uh, I mean V delta P, if you are using for solid and liquid, you can use this formula. For gas, if it is, uh, the pressure is low or it is ideal gas, you can consider V delta P ignorable. You can ignore it. So you can consider zero if the phase is gas, if the pressure, low pressure change at gas phase. So if you want to use this formula straight, you know, this is the constant 1.013 multiplied 10 minus four. It is delta P changes of the pressure that for example, here we have changes of pressure from five to one. We have molecular weight that is given to you inside the table and have a specific gravity of acetone. So you just use this specific uh, simplified formula to be able to calculate. So I just uh, substitute the data we have for V delta P, we have CPDT, evaporation enthalpy, and just put it inside this calculation. You can just read the data from the table and be able to calculate, right? You, can, you are able to calculate and uh, finalize it. Just for your own practice, you can continue. The same thing we have for acetone at vapor phase, 20 degree five atmosphere. Remember our reference point is acetone as liquid, 20 degree five atmosphere. So if you look at the changes from here to here, we will see temperature pressure are still same, just the phase of the acetone change here. So basically, if you have the, because it is evaporation heat from this to this, if you have evaporation heat at five atmosphere, you can read it just, you can just consider change of the phase. But because we don't have evaporation heat at five atmosphere, I have to break it down to one atmosphere to be able to get the data of evaporation. So that is why first, again, I actually change the, pressure to one atmosphere at the same temperature and the same phase, right? Then I consider the temperature will be increased to near the, bo to the boiling point at constant uh, pressure and uh, liquid phase. Then I just change the phase from liquid to, fa uh, to vapor. Now here you can use evaporation heat you have in the table because that one is in one, at one atmosphere. 
again, you have to decrease the, the temperature because the final temperature is 20 degrees. And finally, you have to increase the pressure. In this stage, you have one VDP, V delta P, because of the changes of the pressure. Here you have liquid, so you, you can calculate the formula I just give you. Here is a temperature change, a constant pressure, and actually without changes of the phase, Cp delta P, you can calculate this one. This one is just a change of the phase. You have to use evaporation heat. Here again, changes of the temperature at constant pressure, Cp delta T. Here is changes of the pressure, but because it is for gas and pressure change is very low, we can consider this one as zero. By calculating all this value and adding together, you can calculate H2, that is 32. At the final, actually, component, the point that you were, to, uh, you were supposed to calculate is H3. That is for nitrogen at 20 degree 5 atmosphere. Our reference point is nitrogen at 65 and 1 atmosphere. So, so here we just have temperature and pressure change, but the phase is already in the vapor. So we can do first changes of the pressure, temperature and then phase of the pressure. And as I mentioned, for changes of the pressure, if you have gas phase at low pressure scale, so you can ignore this value. So we just have to calculate delta H, that is changes of the temperature at constant pressure without change of the phase. So you can consider CPDT. This value you can read from the table B2 for nitrogen, and you can read it for, from the table B2 for nitrogen and just substitute the value because we know the changes of the 65 to 20 that we already read from the table. So you can just follow the calculation to be sure that you know how to calculate it. So as we already calculated H1, H2, H3, if we put the data here, H1, H2, and H3, so we already know H out means actually all this value together or h out we calculate h in then we are able so you have to just multiply mole rate there multiply by the specific enthalpy for the outlet stream you add them together inlet stream is just one so by using this one you can calculate the changes of the enthalpy so changes of the enthalpy is equal to energy, uh, the heat transfer or heat rate of the system. So hopefully you got the idea. These are the table B1 and B2 for you to understand uh, how to read the data and how to consider, for example, the data of acetone and nitrogen from this table. Hope you find this uh, explanation useful. Uh, please go through the assignment and example that I uh, give you before in the a worksheet uh, and contact me if you have any problem or you need any you need any clarification have a nice day take care bye